Thank you for purchasing the Smart Character Animation Toolkit and welcome to the help video. The main features of this template are the character animators. This project comes with two characters, a man and a woman. You can use just one or you can use them both together. It also contains eight cutscenes so that you can show your character's hands uh, using mobile uh, devices. And these also have the same smart animation triggers as the main characters. And the project also contains a selection of over 200 graphics and backgrounds so that you have elements drawn by the same artists for a consistent look. Now let's talk about how the project template is laid out. If you look in the project panel, you will see a variety of folders. Let's start with the edit character design folder. In that, you will find two comps, one for the man and one for the woman. And that is where you will make all your design choices for your characters. Next, let's look at the folder edit character animators. Inside that folder, there again is one comp for the man and one for the woman. And those are the comps where you will do all your animating. The folder character cutscenes contains the eight cutscenes if you'd like to show a close up of your character holding a device. And within that folder is another folder where you will edit what you might like to appear on the screen. There's also a folder for backgrounds and graphics containing the over 200 or so um, graphics and backgrounds drawn by the same artist so that you can have a consistent look. There's an empty folder called My Footage where you can place your elements. The pre-comps folder you shouldn't need to bother with. I have also included in the preview example folder the comps I used to create the, the demo, the preview that was on Video Hive. If you would like to see what triggers I used to animate the characters and what look they had, I thought you might find that helpful if you'd like to poke around there. Now let's start with designing your character. Let's start with the woman, just as an example. There are two layers that are displayed. Everything else is shied out. The style choices are all the things you see here, and the color control are to change any of the colors. So you can view them in the effects control, and there are sliders and checkboxes. So for the shirt choice, you can choose which shirt you'd like just by adjusting the slider. And you will see it update on the character. You can change your character's style looks at any time, but you cannot keyframe them. The reason for this is all the animations are done using time remapping, and so the time of the arm, for example, is not going to be the same as the time for the body or the head, and the keyframes will not match up in the final comp. So just have one character style. If you'd like to do more than one, then you can render it out separately. Now let's look at the character animators. This is the character animator woman comp. Now you will see there are a lot of guide layers, and this is where you will be doing your animations. Each of these guide layers is also a cheat sheet. So if you toggle on and off the visibility, for these, you will see what the commands uh, that you can give are. To give a character an animation trigger, you will create a layer marker on the um, appropriate layer, guide layer. 
So let's look at the body action. Right now it is at the stand command. If you would like to have the character do something else, add a marker. Then double click the marker to open up the layer marker panel. And then in the comment field, add the appropriate command that you'd like. You can see for body actions on the body action options cheat sheet. Those are all the things that you can enter. Enter what it says in bold and then in parentheses I have just kind of a brief description that you might find helpful. It is case sensitive. And then if you ran preview, you can see the character moving into that position. The expressions in this project are all what I call smart. And that means when you give the command, the expression will determine the appropriate animation to get into that new command. So it will pull up an animation that is stand, which is the previous state, to lean R. If you were to change the previous command, and then RAM Preview, you will see the new animation. If you misspell a trigger command, there is a default. It is usually the first one in the list of cheat sheets. Uh, the exception would be the blink action, I believe. Any marker other than closed will blink. If the previous marker was closed, it will open. Um, but otherwise, the first one in the list uh, on the cheat sheets is what it will default to if there is a misspelling or if you tried something that just doesn't exist. For example, I sometimes would write surprise instead of surprised or skeptical instead of skeptic. So in those cases, it would default to norm. And in that case, it will create a smooth animation because it will transition into the norm position and out of the norm position. It won't break the animation if you make a mistake like that. One other way this project is smart is that it will interpolate the animation. If you add a new command too close to the previous command. It won't cause any issues. It will just cause the previous animation to speed up so that it completes in time so that it will be smooth. The exceptions to that are the eye direction and the head tilt. Those happen so fast and are so quick there's not really any need to uh, interpolate them any differently. If you put a command in too soon and the, anima the previous animation hasn't completed it will still look okay. All the commands, with the exception of the lip sync controller, will begin their animation, begin to transition to the command that you just gave them at the point that you give them that command. So that when you have the marker for lean R, it is at that point in time it will begin to move into that position. The lip sync controller does work a little differently, um, but I probably should talk about how the lip sync um, and the mouth work uh, as a whole. So let's go into that. There are three mouth options. Let's pull up that cheat sheet. There's a lot of cheat sheets so um, you can't have them all on at the same time. So for the mouth option there are three options. One is mood and if you misspell it or give it a command that doesn't exist, that would be the default mood. And the mouth will follow um, the mood that you give the facial expressions, which are shown over here. The second option is speech, and that is a generic speech loop. So if you toggle between the command for mood and the command for speech, it will kind of be like an on-off um, easy lip sync option. It doesn't look as good, but it's easy. The third option, and that is what I used mostly in the demo, is lip sync. It is manual. It really isn't that hard. So the first thing, if you want to do manual lip sync, is to make the mouth option lip sync and give it that command, which you can see I have already done that on the layer. And then that will mean that the mouth will follow the trigger, the animation triggers in the lip sync controller layer. Let's turn on that cheat sheet. And there you have all the commands. 
Um, what's in parentheses is not what you enter. That's just a description of what it does. It's also important to note that the lip sync controller interpolates differently than all the other commands. Where all the other commands begin their animation when you give them the command, the lip sync controller will interpolate so that it completes the animation on that point. It's a little more intuitive because as you are controlling for the lip sync, it's easy to mark up your audio with, okay, this is where the P sound is. This is where the T sound is. This is where the A hits its peak. It's very easy to mark it up that way. So when you do that, the lip sync controller will just be a lot more intuitive. It also means that if your character is talking fast, it will speed it up. If your character is talking slow, it will slow down the animation. It will interpolate um, to match how your commands are given. One thing to be careful of with that, however, is if your character finishes speaking and then they haven't said anything for a while, it will continue to interpolate into the next thing. So you might need to add something to hold, um, such as going into a small smile or taking a breath. Um, not the command two is good for taking a breath. So you might find that you need to add a little extra um, command in there, whereas all the other layers will hold the previous command until you give it something new. The lip sync controller is a more smooth interpolation, but if you're going to be lip syncing, it's much more intuitive that way. If you plan to have your character speaking and you would like to lip sync, I find it very helpful to start with the audio and to mark it up based on what it says. Then you can use those markers as cues for both the lip sync controller, but also for hand gestures and body motion um, to make it seem more natural. So start with your audio. And let me go into the preview example where I have the audio that I used for that. If you put that in a new comp, this is just my helpful tip, you don't have to do this. And you zoom into the audio, you have a very uh, visual clues to what your audio is saying. And you can RAM preview this and add markers with what it says when it says it. Then you can copy this layer and drag it into your animator and you will have a layer with all the words that you want the character to say. Then you can add markers on your lip sync control layer that correspond to that. Add gestures for the hands and arms and the body motions and moods that suit your script. I should also point out that the left and right always refer to the character's perspective. So the right arm action will control the character's right arm. So it's on your left. And that applies to these body part actions here, as well as the commands. Um, all right, I have marked this up with a bunch of trigger commands. And if we RAM preview that, you can see the character transition from these commands to these. Now, the good thing about the trigger animations is that it's easy to change when they happen. So if we don't want them to be all lined up, they don't have to be. We can move them at different points in time. Let's ramp preview that and see what happens. I do think in general it looks better if they go together, particularly the arms and the hands. It seems to be a more natural movement if all the animation takes place at the same time. But you certainly don't have to have every body part change every time. Sometimes it's nice to have a little subtle motion with um, just a hand gesture, a blink, a look in a different direction, or, an, or a head tilt all by itself. Sometimes that looks very nappy, especially for a narrator. There are a couple different ways that you can use your animated character once you are done with the animation. Um, you can do everything right here in this comp, 
or you can place the comp inside another one. If you would like to do it inside this comp, I have a character controller to scale up. If you would like to um, zoom in on the character, for example, that would be the way to do it. And it will control everything is parented to it. I also have two layers, two guide layers, uh, behind character and in front of character. So anything you would like to go in front of this character, such as a desk, put it above this layer in the stack. Anything that should go behind the character, like a background, should go below that layer in the stack. If you would like to use, for example, both characters together, the way I did in the preview, you can um, put them both inside another comp. You can turn on Collapse Transformations to keep the vector format. And one other good tip that I should point out, if you have a lot of markers, uh, for example, this happened to me when I wanted to insert a line of dialogue after I had lots and lots of markers, um, trigger markers lined up. I wanted to move a, an entire block of markers for all these layers uh, to a different point in time so that I could insert a line of dialogue. I found a script that was particularly helpful and it is called Copy Paste Markers. You can find that at aescripts.com. If you just Google copy paste markers, you will find it. And with the paid version, what you can do is you can copy all the markers that you just carefully laid out to a new layer and then uh, like a, a, a null layer and then slide that layer over in time and then copy them back. And I found that worked very well. Um, so I would highly recommend that. Um, but a way to avoid that is to make sure that you have your narration and your script just the way you like it before you start putting out all these markers. Well, I think that just about covers it. This is my first video tutorial, so I apologize if it has uh, been less than it should have been. I am quite responsive on my Video Hive profile, so if you send me a message, if you have any issues, I am usually very quick to respond. Well, happy animating. I hope you enjoy this project. And if you like it, please uh, give us a good rating. Thanks.